So I'm very excited to say, for the first hour of Ryland on Saturday, I have got a Pet Shop Boys takeover. Neil and Chris are in now. Hi. Please. Good afternoon. So, I, I'm having a, a moment. I'm having a moment that you two are sat opposite me. This is this actually happening? I think it is happening, yes. Are you regretting it already? No, no, we're <laughs> looking forward to it. We wouldn't be here otherwise. Honestly, I'm so honoured that you have come in. And because you've decided to come and have a little chat with me, I'm dedicating the whole first hour to you two. We are. We but are what are you doing for the other two? Oh, don't worry about that. Just talking <laughs> okay. rubbish. I'll bring me mum, see what she's having for dinner. And we'll all be fine. Um, boys, it is so lovely to one finally properly meet you because I've been a massive fan of yours. We sort of met digitally on the Zoe Ball We show. did, we did. Yeah. Like, our voices connected at they one did, point. Yes. Not in the way I want them to, but we'll talk yes. about that more later. Um, but thank you so, so much for coming in. There is so many things I want to ask you, but I want to go back to the beginning because I love the fact of how you two met. Literally Literally, by chance, in a hi-fi store. And am I right in saying, Neil, this was just because you were trying to get a jack made for yeah. something? Yeah, it was 1981, and I'd bought, very modern in those days, a synthesizer. <sighs> anyway, I got it home, and I plugged it in, and no sound came out of it. And I was slightly puzzled by this, and it suddenly occurred to me it didn't have any speakers in it. Oh, that was a problem. So, uh, I, by the way, I would do the same now, probably. <laughs> and, um, anyway, so I had a, a sort of 1970s stereo system, and so I went. I realised I needed a jack plug to go in the two little things you stick in the back of oh, the... It was all too technical for me. It was too technical for me, really. Anyway, anyway there's a shop on the King's Road, and um, I went in, and the guy said, OK, yeah. Uh, so he went around the back and welded... The jack plug to the two little things. You could do that now, health and safety. You that wouldn't. Would, no, no, it wouldn't no, happen. It just wouldn't happen on anyway. Amazon or something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably be easier. Actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, but what wouldn't happen is that then Chris Lowe walked in, and uh, and there's the smell of welding, and there's no one else in the shop apart from the two of us. So we just started chatting because we had to wait, and then man eventually comes out with the. Did you originally think it was Chris that smelled of welding, or no? No, I didn't think that. You, you didn't. Well. You knew it was out of the back. <laughs> so Chris, you obviously meet Neil. In the shop, hello, how are you? Then you just go down the pub. What happens in the pub? Well, we were chatting about music, actually. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, we things both, we liked, things we hated. We both had a bottle of pills. Oh. Po probably, I think. Probably, yeah. anyway. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Um, and uh, I lived over the road from the pub, so Chris came to see the synthesizer. And... Uh, he played the synthesizer. I had a guitar in those days, so I played the guitar. And, um, and that was it. It was sort of, it didn't take long to get going, weirdly. I, it, it didn't take long to get going. We sort of started to write a song even then, actually. It wasn't very good, but we did start to what write was something. It? Uh, well, I'm not going to sing it. I can, being oh. me, I can't remember it. But it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't very good. It wasn't very good. <laughs> I mean, cutting room floor, I'd still take it for one of my own. I'm not going to lie. So if it's still I've got, about... I've got a cassette of it. It'll probably appear on a on a Radio 2 documentary. Oh, brilliant. Right, yeah. Fine, we're sold. We're holding yeah, you to that one. Yeah. We're holding you to that one. Um, what I love about you two is obviously the music at the time. You know, you've got all that 80s, 80s influence all happening everywhere. Well, remember, this is 81. Yeah, exactly. Barely got going. It barely got going. Yeah. But the music that was really pulling at your heartstrings was back in the gay clubs yeah and that that sort of europe sound that euro sound that was coming through the synthesizer like you said yes it was really sort of starting to make waves like now we look at music and pretty much everything synthesizer it's got this in it's got that and it's all electronic whereas back then that was really i know it was exciting yeah it was exciting also we also like hip-hop music which is just starting which was in those days very influenced by craft work so again yeah. it was all synthesizers so it was, it was those sort of two things bring them together um, but music in the cl used to go to gay clubs or pubs and you would hear songs you didn't hear anywhere else. Yeah. And the amazing thing is by the end of the 80s, that had become the sound of pop music. Yeah. And we were sort of there quite near the beginning. Yeah. Um, the Trailblazers. Yeah. the tra Well, because we, we didn't release a record there for another four years or something. Mm. But and in that time, you know, when we first met, we, liked, we both liked Soft Tell. Yeah. And Strange Love and Bed Sitter. And then after that, of course, Bronski Beat came along. Yeah. Um, small town boy and why and so um, yeah and then, then so there was quite a lot of electronic music in the first half of the age and we were into that well we need to talk about your first single because you got signed by EMI you did your first TV I was actually watching an interview with you <laughs> Real Stories with Dermot which was great by the oh, way oh it is good yeah it was yeah. really great yeah. that first TV performance and I was watching you guys watch it back and you were just like wow like we feel like deers in headlights well we you know we just we didn't know what we were doing really did we just yeah. had a lovely time. Yeah, just having love. We knew Gary Crowley anyway from 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 going to the Wag Club or something. Yeah, and uh, I seem to remember they dressed 
I, there was something to do with it. It was called Let's Bounce Some Money, so there was a lot of money going on. Mm. Um, it was sort of slightly high concept, but it was also, because we, we don't have it anymore either. No. A children's programme with the pop get, with the pop guests on it. You don't get that anymore. No, you don't, we, I don't have none of that anymore. I mean, at one time, people used to go and crack a jack. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it all back. That's what I say. Bring it all back. Now it's all on CBBC, I suppose. Oh, it's all on digital. You've got to press <coughs> the red button, the yellow button, the green button, and then that's go it. up, down, left, right. It's like a cheat on Sonic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But they can all do that from the age of two anyway. I know, that's what's frightens me. They can yeah. use it better than us. Yeah. Well, look, we are going to play Opportunities now. I've just got to say before we do... I think that song's due a re-release. I've oh. had a, I've had a video concept for it, boys. All right, okay, let's hear it. Imagine someone who's been in the tabloids, right, yes. and is falling off now. Tabloid dialing no more. Yeah, sees a good-looking guy. Is this oh, you? It's me. <laughs> it's me. I'm putting it out there. I'm, I'm also going to feature on the song, but I'm yeah. just putting it out there. Okay. Maybe sees, it's your maybe it's your version of the song. Well, if you're going to if you're going to say a verbal contract right now, I will take it. <laughs> you know what? I will take it. But yeah, sees good-looking, and it's all about how you play the tabloids now. To like get back into being that tabloid darling, I've got it. I'll write it down for okay, you. Okay, okay. But I do want ten percent. You want ten percent? <laughs> That's Actually, that's quite quite cheap. Really I'm, quite cheap. I am cheap. I want yeah. I've got this job. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Well, uh, here it is. I'm riding on Saturday. This is opportunity. Boy, well, it's opportunity. So we're we're on that, yeah. Little yeah, deals. We've good got idea. Going on there. We're getting oh, Guy Ritchie to direct it. Perfect, babe. I'm sold. Get the contract ready. <laughs> get that contract ready. Um, now, Neil, I love this because you were working as assistant editor at Smashits, wasn't you? When we met, actually, I was working for a company called ITV Books, doing TV tie-ins. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, he's been about. Yes. It was the following year I went to Smashits, and it eventually became rose to the giddy heights of deputy editor. Well, what I love about this is a year on, you were then on the cover. Of Smash Hits. It was actually, I left Smash Hits in, um, yeah, in, I think, June or something, and um, in 85, and in January 86, we were on the cover of Smash Hits. That, that must have felt completely surreal from going, from sitting in that Yeah, because when I left, they gave me a fake cover. I would have like a little while, bye, Neil. No, but it was sort of with funny catchphrases I used to say and things like that. And then only eight months later or something, I was... Um, on the cover. We were, we were on, the, on the actual cover. As Pet Shop Boys. Which was a very exciting moment. Cause, I can imagine. I mean, just being on the cover of Smash It's even when you were there, it's still an exciting thing. Yeah. And uh, I remember going, someone handing me a copy of it and thinking... It was, it was quite an amazing moment. Well, I used to read Smash It. It's not just because Neil was the editor, because I thought it was really... I used to read Smash It's and Private Eye. Oh, um, wow. And both I, hits. Yeah. <laughs> and they were both incredibly both, funny. Both yeah. funny. Um, so, yeah, it was... Um, the whole thing's a bit surreal, if you want to yeah. think of it like that. Of course. Um, particularly the first time you go on Top of the Pops. Yeah. Because that's something that you've literally watched all your life, and then you're on it. Yeah. And it's... Pretty, you're pretty you're in the telly. It is pretty weird, yeah. It is, it is a oh, surreal watching, it, watching yourself back. <gasps> I mean, I hate it. Oh. How does it feel watching that performance? See, if Top of the Pops was on now, you'd be presenting it. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot, lot a lot of better people than me out there. No, I think, I think. No, it'd be, be Clara Ampho. You'd be, yeah. Anyway, well, she's good as well. She, I love she's Clara. Good. Justice yeah. for Clara Ampho. That's yeah. what I say. Did she? She's on the Brits. Yeah, she done an amazing. She did job a very good job. Loved her. She did a very good job. She's a good girl. She's very good. Um, well, we both of you presenting it. Oh, well, we'll both have a go. I think we can take it. <coughs> yeah. yeah, we'll have a go. Anyway, no, but I remember watching ourselves the first time on Top of the Pops. I was absolutely horrified beyond belief. <laughs> Why? Just, actually, and funny enough, I've seen it since on some compilation. And actually, I thought it looked all right, but the, I don't know, it's just so, you feel so self-conscious. Of course you do. And but of course, you're, you're sort of inventing what you do and trying Who to present I? yourself and... Uh, it's, it's, it was quite nerve-wracking. Well, West End Girls, I mean, it went number one pretty much everywhere. America, the UK. This is Linda Clark's favourite song, by the way. Linda used to play this down Kate Udders in the East End on repeat. Very, that's your mum? That's my mum. Good old Linda. She, Linda loves Linda, it good taste. Yeah. This was the vinyl that I used to steal from her collection as a kid. Plug the headphones in with the wire about 30 centimetres long yes. and sit next to it, <laughs> listening to West End Girls on repeat. It took you around the world, the song, did? as well. It totally really, did, really yes. did. And it we, actually still does. Still does. I'm not surprised. I'm yeah. not surprised. That. Did it ever take you down Kate Udders in Stepney Green? Yeah, Sadly not. I don't oh. think so. You would have loved it. Still got that to look forward to. <laughs> Benji's in Bethnal Green. Damn Benji's. I bet it took you down <laughs> Benji's, 100%. Well, look, we need to hear that song now because it is such an absolute classic. The intro to this song is the perfect amount of time for everyone to grab their man bags, chuck them on the floor, and get ready to dance. Recorded 
two minutes walk from the studio. And I'll go there afterwards. Please. And that's Neil in stilettos walking down the road. <laughs> I'm going to go on a pilgrimage. <laughs> Boys, an absolute bop, West End Girls. Please tell me you never get bored of hearing that song. Well, we do. Have, we finish the, more, more more or less finish the concerts with it every night. And, you know, you'd think you would be bored with it, but there's something... It's a one-off, that track. It is. It's a, just a real one-off. And um, when you're doing it, you just get into the mood of it. It's a haunting track. Does it, that make it sense? Feels, it, it is haunting. It feels haunting when you... You know, I'm seeing it live. Mm. It's, uh, it it's sort of moves me a bit. It's a gorgeous track. I remember one... Th- I used to have on repeat when you did the Brits medley, when you did the oh, yes. mix. Yeah. Oh, just when you end... I know you say you end on West End Girls, but yeah. you can just hear everyone just get up and just be like, yes, <laughs> here we go. I'm in the moment. Hold me drink. And also a big <laughs> record in the East End. Yep, massive record in the East Taxi End. Taxi drivers always used to tell me. Oh, honestly... The tune. I think it's the official song of Stepney Green. Well, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you've got blue anthem. plaque up there. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Well, boys, I want to move a little bit forward because I remember when Pop Art came out, when you brought Pop Art out the That's album. 2003. 2003. Yeah. I was still at <clears throat> secondary school at the time and I asked for it for Christmas and I got it. And that entire Christmas day, I had it on repeat. And it's all the hits, all the hits were over the years. But there was a couple of tracks that weren't the hits. They were new songs. They were new songs for yeah. pop art. And there's two tracks I'm going to play in a second. And the first one is Flamboyant. This track, I tell you what, from a young age, I've been obsessed with. One, because it felt so futuristic to me. Yeah. And two, since I subsequently became Rylan off the telly, the lyrics, when I say touch me in a very emotional way, that line, just crossing the street, is almost heroic. <laughs> I feel that line. <laughs> I feel that line. I sometimes am frightened to cross the street for people to go, and Rylan, Rylan. It's actually uh, about you. And then, yes, he said it. <laughs> he said it, Mum. <laughs> he did it. Oh, no, where did it come from? Where, what was the concept for this song? Because I don't, I don't care if I've not got no listeners. I want to know this. Well, the, uh, there's, there's always been in Britain... Um, flamboyant, outrageous people. If you yeah. go back to sort of Oscar Wilde yeah. or someone, and or even early, you know, Bo Brummel or someone, mm. and uh, there's always been there's always been that in pop music. Well, I think of Boy George. We were yeah. talking earlier before the show about Boy George yeah. and Marilyn. Yeah, flamboyant, flamboyant. Car- Philip Salon, flamboyant characters. Yeah. I remember once seeing Philip Salon. If you don't know, is a friend of Boy George, and and is a still a face on London clubs. I remember once seeing him cross Charing Cross Road dressed in a traditional Welsh milkmaid's outfit. Casual. And, and I think it was at that point Full I thought, it. crossing the road, it's almost heroic. It's such a strong line. I'm just going to put it out there. Can we do a re-release that I feature on, please? We'll put it on the list. Can you, can I think we're, we're making a short album here, aren't we? The, I mean, why not go all in? Why not go all in? Ryland sings the Pet Shop. Ryland boys. sings the Pet Shop, boys. One night only at the Royal Albert Hall. There you go, yes. <laughs> I'm in for it. Well, look, this is probably my favourite Pet Shop Boys song ever. Oh, it's a great ever. choice. Thank yeah. you very much. This is Flamboyant. Honestly, them lyrics. I'm, I'm still going to take that claim to fame, even though you didn't know me in 2003, the, the Pet Shop Boys, you heard it here, wrote that song about me, which is very kind of you both. So thank you. I really it was, appreciate it. It was a premonition. <laughs> Honestly, you're a witch, you are, new. Yes. you're a witch. Always have been. Yeah. Um, we're going to stick with Pop Art, because okay. another one of my favourites, and I believe on the album, they're back-to-back, is Miracles. Yeah, yeah they probably are, yeah. I love this track. So what was the idea behind the track, Miracles? Well, we, when you do a Grace Hits album, you have to do write two new Singles. It's the law. And it's it's a very difficult thing to do because normally a single comes out of writing a load ton of songs. Mm. And so um, we wrote Flamboyant ourselves, but with this we worked with a producer called Adam F. I love Adam who F. Was, who was a sort of um, very epic hip-hop producer. Let's not forget DJ Fresh. And his like friend, Dust. DJ Fre- mm. Fresh, who also worked on it. And they lived in St Albans, and so we went to St Albans. And um, well, we stayed there anyway. And this is track, so he wrote most of the music and I sang on it and uh, it's sort of like a love it's a love poem yeah um, using images from nature it's a bit it's, it's very beautiful it, it, it was self-consciously beautiful yeah. and you use the word epic that's it's exactly poetic, how really. the song feels it's poetic very epic yeah. you've got the rain in there you've got the storm going yeah. it's yeah. really really beautiful and it's all about 
Blue skies uh, so always it's there it's when just, you're around. It's just about, it's just, you know, when you fall in love with someone, it's like when they arrive, the sun shines. Oh, I wish it's sun, sun to shine down on my life. I'm telling you that much. <laughs> it's a bit, bit rainy at the moment. Well, look, here it is. This is another one of my favourite tracks from Pop Art. This is Miracles. I mean, it's such a gorgeous song, Miracles. Listen to that for ages, actually. Well, I'm glad you have. I've yeah, repeated. No. Thank you very much. I, I, I top enjoyed rotations. that. Enjoyed that. Hey, so, well, well, I enjoy it. And yeah. you know what? We were having a little chat while the, the track was on, and you were saying for the Pet Shop Boys to have a song like that that's pretty much, I'm going to say, a love song, a love note. Could we go with maybe a, a sonnet? <laughs> we could. Maybe. It's quite rare. Chris actually um, oh, no, it says, oh, you, you had to bring that down, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, Fab, on the new album, out on April 26th, um, there's a song called Feel, the second track, which was written the same time as that. Stop it. Yeah, when we were, when we were tr- trying to write singles for Pop Art, and we had this great track, I always liked it, and it had a chorus, and I could never think of any words to go with it. And during lockdown, I suddenly thought of words for it. It came. So it's the second track of the album, but that is also... A love song like that is, it's got no downside to it. It's and like I said, that's very rare yeah. for you guys, because normally yeah. there's a little twist in the towel. There's well, a little sting in the towel There sometimes. is normally a little sting in the towel. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I love it. I think it's a gorgeous track. It's an absolute gorgeous track. And we talk about, we're going to talk about the new album in a second and yeah. the new single, Dancing yeah. Star. But before we do, I want to go to another track, and that track is Minimal. Now, the reason I've chosen this Another one, unusual choice. I know, babe, I'm an unusual boy. <laughs> what can I say? Have a look at the teeth. You're not like other boys. I'm not like other boys. I'm quite flamboyant, actually. <laughs> um, but the reason I've chosen Minimal is because it makes me want to ask you the question, and I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, but whenever you guys release new music, you've been doing it a while now, when you release new music, you make it sound so current and so new, but at the core, it still feels like Pet Shop Boys. How, do you know how you do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what we do. Just pure luck. I I attribute this to the fact that we sort of write music, sounds a bit naff actually, but we sort of write music for fun, really. Like during, lo- love that. during lockdown, Chris just sits at home and churns out music and sends it to me. Is that literally how it works? It's literally, uh, if, if we're in the studio together, of course we're doing that together, but during lockdown we're in separate places. So you'll, you'll write the track, as in you'll do all the music, do all the composing, get it all together, and then, Neil, it comes over to you and you sit there and, and I've go... I've got to think of some words for it. Oh, oh, I like this. Oh, this melody would work. Oh, actually, I wrote that thing down the other week. That yeah, could work. No, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it is, yeah. Oh, my God. And this one, Minimal, I think you wrote the music too, and... Do you remember, remember what it is? Uh, unfortunately, I've got... Chris, do you know where you are? I haven't got a very good memory. Um, so I'm asking right, the wrong, We're asking the wrong... I know where I am, just about. Um, no, I've, I've, I've got no memory of where this came I mean, what from. I liked about this was thinking of the line... It's really about minimal art. Yeah. It's quite pretentious in a way, but I just like the way... The spelling thing. Um, I mean, right, can I ask you a question about this? Yes. Right. M I N I M A L, minimal, minimal. That's it. Do you say N or do you say two M's? No, I say N. Okay, fine. I've always wanted to ask. I'm, 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 I hope I do anyway. I know. <laughs> Can you imagine if I've just found an Easter egg no. in this song? <laughs> after, t- after 20 years, the song should have been called mistake. Minimal. Uh, mi- minimal, yes. Uh, no, it's definitely minimal. Uh, no, I just like the, the way that it with the, worked with the music. Actually, yeah. there is a word you say wrong, isn't there? Uh, nuclear. Geordies. Right, here we go. When I grew up in Newcastle, we used to say, even now, uh, uh, nu- nuclear, not nuclear. Nuclear. It's like nuclear power. Nuclear power, man. Nuclear power. <laughs> and of course, it's nuclear. Oh, you, you do well on Geordie Shore, you would. Me, yeah, I yeah. don't know why they've never asked. Why are you on a nuclear power, nuclear man? Nuclear power. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a nuclear power station. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's just a few words I mispronounced, I think. But, um, well, I love the track. I've not had your advantages in life. But, <laughs> you, you call these tea, these tea for a disadvantage, <laughs> all right? Don't start with me. I'm going to play it now. This is Minimal from the Pet Shop Boys. Such a bop. <laughs> Plus, quite educational. How would you spell the word? <laughs> I mean, an absolute bop. 
an absolute bop. And I can confirm it's M I N I. It is definitely N. Yes, yeah, produced, produced by Trevor Horn. Thank Wonderful. you, Trevor Horn. Great, great production. Brilliant great track. Production. Brilliant track. Um, boys, we, we're nearing the end. Oh, oh that's please, no, quickly. Please, please don't shed a tear. Please. <laughs> it's all right. We can see each other again. I promise. I promise. Um, but we're going to end on your brand new single, which came out this week. So we've had the exclusive on radio today. You did, yes. We've had a lovely time. Tell me about the track. Because this actually is about someone. It is, but it's not how it started. Because oh. you may know at the beginning of the track, there is the sound of waves and there seagulls. I can do the seagull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a duck. That's a duck. I apologize. Um, well, I just wrote a backing track and put um, some sounds of the seaside and uh, put a, no, then you put a, a, put a, a, a little vocal, which was, I love it here, let's stay forever. It was about going to the beach or something. It was about going to the beach. Did you just go down <laughs> South End for the day and fall? I'm going to record that on voice note and hope for the best. That happens quite a lot, by the way. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, then I, uh, for, I think I'd just seen a documentary on the television. We're still in lockdown. Right. About um, I mean, lockdown, I mean, it done all right for you two, didn't it? it did. When it comes down to the writing. No, it did. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very, very productive time. Yeah, it's uh, it. uh, uh, There's a program about the ballet dancer Rudolf Nureyev, uh, who was in the Soviet Union and he defected at Paris Airport and became a huge star dancing with Margot Fontaine and, and uh, was famous all around the world. And, and then he died in the early 90s. And um, I don't know, I just seen this and I thought of dancing stars. Just in your head. And Chris's track sounds to me like early Madonna. It actually does. No, it sounds really. I could. I wanted to do a video where we cut early Madonna together. To just it. for a laugh. Just for. I'm hoping someone on YouTube might do that. Well, you say early Madonna. I remember on the Confessions tour, you make a little appearance in the Sorry intro. We did. We remix the song Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And she, oh. we, uh, actually, we had a funny moment at the Brits Awards. I gave her an award, and then we both ended up simultaneously. Me and Madonna being interviewed. By Dermot O'Leary. A lovely Derm. <clears throat> for Radio, I think Radio 2. Would have been Radio 2, yeah, yeah he loves it. Anyway, and Dermot O'Leary says, um, can you can you recreate the start of that mix? <laughs> so Madonna goes, uh, es tut mir leid. And I go, I'm sorry, j'ai désolé. <laughs> so sorry. It was really, I couldn't believe we were doing it. It was really funny. Ich bin drauf. That's it. Oh, you know. You've, see? So let's be a champion. Another... Another educational track. Listen, it teaches you languages. We teach you how to spell on this show. You find out what Linda's going to be eating tonight. Yeah. We do all the education. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know why I'm not sponsored by BBC Arts. <laughs> I don't know how it's not happened. I don't know how it hasn't. Well, look, this is coming from the new album. The yeah, album's called Nonetheless. So yes. what am I expecting from Nonetheless, please? Nonetheless, I think it's a very warm-sounding album. Nice. Um, very, very tuneful. I think you're going to like it. I'm, I'm, baby, it's given. Um, and uh, it's got an orchestra on quite a lot of tra- on all the tracks, actually. So it's a diff- the last three albums have all been pure electronics. Mm. This one is more sort of warmer, r- maybe romantic sounding. Uh-huh. Um, would miracles fit in there somewhere? Miracles actually could have fitted into it. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. If you like your time. If you like miracles, you'll like nonetheless. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Well, I'm gonna play that brand new single now. This is Dancing Star on Ryland on Saturday. That's the beach. Oh, I felt like I was on holiday there, boys. There you go. The brand new track, Dancing Star. Back in Benidorm. Back in Benidorm. Get your sticky Vicky out. That's what I say. <laughs> She's um, gone, I think. I know. God, may God rest her But her daughter's soul. taken she over. She has taken over. Yeah. She, didn't, she used to do the gymnastics before her. <laughs> so she was the daughter, was the warm-up act for Sticky Vicky. Oh, right. And used to do the gymnastics. Like, very serious. But now, Vicky's sadly been lost. Um, yeah, the daughter's taken over. Bless yeah. her. It's nice to keep it in the family, isn't it? Absolutely. It really, really is. Um, the Nep- track. Nepo baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it very much is. It very much is. <laughs> uh, the new track, Dancing Star, from the brand new album, nonetheless. The album is out. When's that coming out? April 26th. April 26th. April 26th. And the second track is called Phil. Yes. Oh, I'm very excited to hear a bit of Phil. Uh... I'm very excited. Boys, I cannot thank you enough, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart. There are not many people I would dedicate the whole first hour of my show to, but you could have had three. You, well, you could have had the old three. We're honoured. Oh, no, honoured. I'm yes. honoured. I'm so thrilled to have finally properly met you. It is the biggest pleasure to have you on the show. 
thank you so much. Good luck with the album. And I really, really hope we do a single together soon. Okay. <laughs> Is that a verbal contract? It's not quite a verbal contract. Can we contract. just say yes? <laughs> but maybe, but we've lodged the news. the news, Neil. Can we just say yes? Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me say yes. <laughs> did a track with Ian Wright, didn't you, Chris? But no, <laughs> don't bring Rylan in. Just put it out there. <laughs> say yes. Yeah, that's a yeah. They're just laughing at us. Just laughing. I'm going to keep pushing it right near the news. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who knows? Close who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Do you know what? Who I will knows? take that. That'll do. That who will knows? do for me. <laughs> Boys, thank you so much. Thank and I'll you. see you really soon. It's the Pet Shop Boys. I mean, I've got to say. <laughs> Not only do you have an hour with the Pet Shop Boys. But who does a seg into Hey Dougie? Do you know what I mean? You get it all on this show. I want to say a massive, massive thank you. I'm honest, I'm overjoyed. I feel like a kid in a candy shop. A massive thank you to Neil and Chris. That, that was the biggest pleasure to sit down with the pair of them and, and have that chat because I'm a massive Pet Shop Boys fan. And I've been reading all of your messages coming in. There are so many. Um, talking about my music choices, a lot of people saying, I love Flamboyant, I love Miracle, I love Minimal, they're like my favourite track. Uh, so hence the reason why you listen to this show. Uh, Rylan loved your interview with the Pet Shop Boys. West End Girls was the first single I ever bought. Great memories and great tunes. That's Lisa in sunny Stockport. Uh, Ian in Stockton on T says, Rylan, I'm 13 years younger than Neil Tennant and the Pet Shop Boys have been a soundtrack to my life. I had the great privilege to see them up close when they performed at Teesside University. Cheers, Ian, for getting in touch. Uh, Karen in Kent has got in touch. I didn't want to say that too quick. Uh, listening to you and the Pet Shop Boys has reminded me of my walk to work in around 1986 I had a big perm and of course my Walkman cassette player I was listening to West End Girls walking to the beat I was 23 I'm 60 now and it's lovely memories of being so young do you know what they just have haven't they like the Pet Shop Boys they've just been the mainstay they've always been there and I think everyone's got a Pet Shop Boys song that reminds them of something. Uh, Rylan, uh, hi to the Pet Shop Boys. I hope that's been amazing. Uh, Paninero, the opening song on disco, signalled the start of every weekend on a Friday night as I lay in the bath before going out on the Raz with the boys. Um, <laughs> I can't read that bit. Uh, brilliant days, brilliant tunes, and still to this day, a fantastic sound. That's from Big Phil in Whitehaven. Guys, honestly, this has been such a pleasure to sit down with them. I want to say thank you to them again thank you for the whole team for, for getting that sorted you've made a little flamboyant dream come a little flamboyant boys dream come true should I say um, well look that was a brilliant hour we are going to keep the music coming uh, soon we're going to be heading to Ribetha get your uh, requests in for that Ryland at bbc.co.uk